And we are live. I'm just going to finish setting up and I will be right with you. Let's make sure um, that you can see me properly. It is 4 p.m. Central Time, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, the light is leaving us. It should be, uh, the sun should be setting in about one hour. So I may have to turn on my little, um, my little cable light here so you can see me better. So I am here today to talk about journey number two out of eight journeys of a mama's life. We're going to talk about the nutrition and the cooking journey. And I apologize, there will be a fly here once in a while. Uh, some of you know that we are a full-time traveling family now. So that means that we travel in a home on wheels, which means that nature enters our home and leaves our home um, at its free will. So we're going to let these flies be. Um, and hopefully they won't disturb us too much. So... Um, it's a beautiful sunny afternoon and I am sitting here uh, in our motor home uh, and feeling so grateful uh, to be able to have so much goodness put together, come together in order for this broadcast to take place. So I'm grateful for this home on wheels. I'm grateful for our choice to become world travelers. I'm grateful for uh, technology, which allows me to bless our family with income on the road. Uh, and I'm grateful that my husband and my amazing partner, Guy, has taken the kids to the playground. And I'm grateful that this technology is allowing me to reach you wherever you are in the world. And I would love it if you chime in during this broadcast uh, and tell me where you're watching this from. Uh, what's the weather like? Uh, how your day is going? Uh, how many kids you have? Anything. Uh, just so much goodness. Uh, life is truly, truly beautiful. Uh, so these days, I'm on a journey to share the eight journeys of a mama's life with you in greater depth and finally get these journeys um, out of my head and heart and into digital pixels that will hopefully reach your mama mind and heart and inspire you to start a journey. So I've been sharing and researching and discussing and teaching and writing about the eight journeys of a mama's life in my blog, on my Facebook groups for moms, in my podcast, but rarely on video. Uh, but the time has come for me to be courageous and get my message to moms out on video. So this isn't easy. Um, it is scary, and every morn morning I want to uh, chicken out and sit down and just write a blog post about it, uh, but then a uh, guy turns to me and says, it's time. Get it on video. Get it out. Let them hear your voice. Let them see you. No more hiding and sharing, sharing it only with me and with close friends. Go do it. So here I am, uh, being brave and feeling safe with you, mamas. You are my safe place, and I hope that I'm your safe place too. Okay, so let's get started. The eight journeys of a mama's life. I'm going to do a run through quickly before we dive into one of them. So we have the self-care journey, the parenting journey, the marriage journey, child education okay. journey. A uh, business and family finance journey. Oh, go away. <laughs> uh, home organization journey. Nutrition and cooking journey. And the fitness journey. So today I'm going to be diving deeper, deeper into nutrition and the cooking journey. Uh, because, hey, families need to eat, right? Families like to eat, don't they? <laughs> the eating and the nutrition uh, and cooking are such an inseparable part of family life that I would like to shine a light on the good and the bad 
and the ugly. And what can we do to improve? So buckle up, mamas. It's going to be quite a ride. Okay, so nutrition. There's so much to say about looking deeper into our nutrition journey and seeing what could use some uplifting, what could use some fine-tuning, maybe an entire overhaul, um, but in baby steps. Uh, so I per personally, through the years, have tried everything. And I mean, I think everything uh, in my journey to find the perfect nutrition journey for me. So here's a brief list of some of the nutrition journeys that I've tried. Okay. So I did 100 days of sugar detox a few times. 100 days of gluten detox, a few rounds of that too. 100 days of the keto diet, ketogenic diet, that was once. Vegetarianism, veganism. I've tried Overeaters Anonymous. I did 100 days of intermittent fasting. I tried my father's way of eating, what I call the VOVA method, which I'll talk about in another broadcast. I tried my mom's way of eating, which is a combination of the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting. And I've tried several um, emotional eating journeys. I've done them all through the years, um, only to find out that none of them work for me. Isn't that interesting? Because it turns out that any time I put a restriction on myself, I'm automatically going to compensate for it elsewhere. Does that happen to you? Therefore, I've decided that dieting is not going to be a part of Journeys for Moms. No sorry. Instead of taking away or restricting ourselves in our nutrition, I'm going to encourage us to add the good stuff in. So much goodness we're going to add that there will be little room for the less nutritious pieces. As my dear friend Azizi taught me, when you engage in self-love, there's little room left for self-harm, which is what all these processed empty, artificially sweetened ingestibles <laughs> are. So in this nutrition journey, in Journeys for Mom, we're going to focus on self-love. So before we put something in our mouth, I encourage us to think, is this a form of self-love or is this a form of self-sabotage? If it's self-love, Enjoy it. If it's self-sabotage, you could still eat it, but at least you are eating it. You're doing so with the awareness that you are sabotaging yourself. Okay, so how do we create self-love journeys using food? All right, so let's roll up our sleeves and let's get started. Let's start with something very basic. Water. Would you agree that drinking water daily is a form of self? Of. I would. How many of us are challenged by this and not drinking enough water? I know I am. When I design a water drinking journey for myself, remember, change is made in baby steps. I take a look at how much water I'm drinking today. So say I'm drinking two cups of water every day. I don't drink a lot. Okay, so what's a baby step that would be helpful to get more of this liquid of life into my body? Can I do three cups a day? Can I just add one cup a day? Yeah, I can do that. So let's uh, recall the steps to creating any journey of the eight journeys, okay? I'm gonna remind you. Step one, you're gonna choose the baby change, the baby step 
that you're gonna take, that you, the change that you're gonna create. In this case, add one cup of water. Uh, you're gonna choose the length of your journey. All right, so if this is a really tough journey, I would choose one day, try a one day journey. Um, if it's a little easier, try a three day journey. If it's relatively simple, try a seven day journey until you reach 100 days. So step one is choosing the, the change that you're gonna make. Step two is choosing the length of the journey. Step three is accountability. You must have accountability in this journey. Uh, so who around you cares enough to hold you accountable to this journey? Who can you trust? Who can you ask um, to hold you accountable? Can you, can you ask your partner to hold you accountable um, as you count down the days? Can you hang a chart on the fridge? where you mark each day and have your child check in with you, you must have a reliable account. They hold the key to something super important, your accountability. Make sure that you get this done, okay? So choosing the change, choosing the length of the journey, choosing an accountability partner, step four is embarking and counting the days. Okay, so let's see how else uh, we can embark on a small nutritional journey that will make a big difference in your lives over time. So remember, it has to have no restrictions or prohibitions, okay? Therefore, there's no compensation, okay? And it has to be birthed out of self-love. So would you agree that eating more vegetables and fruits is a form of self-love that can be added to your nutrition daily. I would. So how do we design a journey in baby steps of adding more vegetables and fruits to our daily meals in baby steps? Okay, so we need a baby change that can make a big difference over time. So this really depends on where you are in your fruit and vegetable journey and how much you've departed from eating in a way that feels good to you. So can I add an apple to my day for seven days? Can I add a fruit or a vegetable to each of my three main meals for three days? Can I commit to five fruits or vegetables for per day for the entire week? Seven days, a seven day journey. So remember the, the steps, choose the baby change, decide on the length of your journey, find an accountability partner, embark and count the days. So I've done uh, this particular journey of fruits and vegetables with other mamas who felt that they would like to nourish themselves with more vegetables on a daily basis. Um, I have done this journey with my husband, he's my accountability partner, and my kids can hold me accountable too. You just need someone who cares enough to hold you accountable. Okay, so let's do another example for how to create a change in the nutrition part of your journey. So would you agree that eating until you're full and then stopping is a way of self-love? I would. So let's try to think of a journey in baby steps to help us establish the habit of eating to satiety and then stopping. So let's think, what would be like a baby step that's easily implementable here? Can I commit to sitting down and eating by a table with no book, no digital devices, every day for three days? So you'd be surprised that when you sit by a table to eat with no distractions except the plate of food before you, um, that you're better able to read the signals of hunger and satiety um, that your body is sending you. Try it, don't take my word for it. So in this case, the baby change would be sitting by the table. The length of the journey that I have chosen is three days or seven days or however long uh, you'd like to engage in this new habit. Go slow. Take smaller days if this is very challenging for you. Uh, the accountability partner can be a good mama friend or my partner. And then I embark 
and I count days. So this is how to create a change in your nutritional intake. There's so many more examples, but I wanted to give you a taste of it. Do I need to turn on more light? Is it is the sun setting and it's getting darker? Let's see. Is this better? Hmm. Well, hopefully somebody will chime in. <laughs> All right, let's talk about cooking, right? Because um, this journey has an element of nutrition and an element of cooking, okay? So there's so much to say about cooking. There's always room for making cooking work better for us, mamas, right? So let's see how we can design a cooking journey that involves a ton of self-love and zero self-sabotage. So many moms say they wish their meals were more planned in advance. So raise your hand if you wish someone magically handed you the perfect meal plan for your family for one week. Except this little fairy does not exist. Or rather, she exists inside of you. So how would I design a journey to improve my meal planning in baby steps? Keep in mind, it has to be a baby step journey because if you design a journey with dramatic changes, chances are it's not going to be sustainable. You're going to quit. So let's think together. Can I plan in advance one cooked meal for one day for tomorrow? This would be a one day journey. Can I plan out our one cooked meal for one day for tomorrow? Yes, I can. Again, the steps to designing a journey. Step one, choose the baby step. Step, step two, decide how many days. Step three, find an accountability partner. Step four, embark and count the days. So, did you succeed in planning one cooked meal for tomorrow? Can you repeat this now for three days? Begin a three-day journey. Did you find an accountability partner that can hold you accountable? Someone you can text daily with writing them day one completed, day two completed, and they're gonna cheer you on? That's what you need. Good. Keep calm and carry on, Mama, until you reach 10 days, then 20 days, then slowly but surely 100 days. All right, let's think of another uh, cooking-related journeys that we've gone through. Many families uh, eat out or order food in um, very, very often. Uh, some moms are not happy with this, and it's making them feel like it's not the best nutritional option for their families. If you are one of those moms, this is for you. So, oh, sometimes eating out is a form of self-love. Eating out nightly can also be seen as a form of self-sabotage for some. So since we're not restricting ourselves or prohibiting anything, because that just tosses out into compensation and self-sabotage mode later, can we add a home-cooked meal to our daily routine? So now, if you're eating your main home-cooked meal at home as a family twice a week or three times a week, can we add another night of home cooking? Granted, this doesn't have to be mom cooking. The kids can cook, dad can cook. It can be, um, it just needs to get done, right? So here goes the journey. The change we're gonna make is gonna be cook one more home-cooked meal per week. The length of the journey is gonna be one week. We're trying this out, right? Accountability, I'm gonna tell someone who cares and make sure they hold me accountable. Then embark and count the days. So in this case, for each night that you cook and eat a home-cooked meal at home, I would add it to the count. So if tonight we ate a home-cooked meal, that's day one. And if we do it again tomorrow, that's day two. And if we skip it the next day, I'm not counting. And if we cooked a home meal, uh, a home cooked meal the day after, that's day three, and so on. We don't count the skip days, ooh, but we keep counting um, as usual as soon as we get back on our horse, okay, so to speak. <laughs> so let's look at one last example for today about creating a cooking journey. So many moms feel alone in the cooking task. Some love it, others, not so much. But think about it for a sec. 
who says that mom has to be the only one to cook? Or even the dad, that the parents have to be the only ones cooking. Why do parents have to be the only ones cooking when there are other abled bodied persons in the house? So let me tell you that if your kids are 10 years old and older, they're capable of putting together a simple meal to feed the family. Yes, surprise, surprise. The younger crowd needs supervision, but I could share that my 12 and 14 year olds cook full meals on their own to feed us all. It's a journey and you're gonna need to empower them to do it, but it is doable, very, very doable. So let's see how we design a journey to improve this situation, okay? So the change we're gonna make is, mm, can we commit that one meal a week is not cooked by mom or dad and not ordered out? <laughs> how awesome would that break be for you, mom, if one night a week you're not the one cooking? So let's design this journey. So one, what's the change we're gonna make? One meal a week is gonna be cooked by the kids. Two, the length of this journey, we're trying this out. We'll try it out for a week. Three, accountability. Your kids can be your accountability partners or a mama friend or your partner. Doesn't matter. Find someone who cares. Four, embark and count. So, did the kids cook dinner last night? Awesome. That's day one. Did they do it again a few nights later? Awesome. Day two. Anytime they cook a meal and you are on break, it counts, okay? So keep counting until you reach 10 days. Uh, maybe you reach 20 days. Keep going and celebrate milestones. Did the kids cook 10 meals in the last few weeks? Let's acknowledge it somehow. They're serving their family beautifully through feeding all of you. And this deserves recognition. Okay. So let's tie this all up and summarize. The guidelines for the nutrition and cooking journey are one, self-love only. Zero, 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 self-sabotage. Two, no strict restrictions or prohibitions, only adding in good and nourishing food. So much so that there is no room left for the sabotaging stuff. Three, water, fruits, vegetables, and whole foods as close to nature as possible and as minimally processed. Whatever that means for your family will bring you a step closer to feeling good about your eating. So what about the unhealthy choices, the sugar choices, the overeating, the emotional binging? The kids eating sweets and asking for more all day. The kids avoiding anything that looks like real food. The nighttime snacking um, after the kids go to sleep. So these are all part of the nutrition and the cooking journey. And we're going to discuss them in length in the near future. So if you have watched my video <laughs> to this point, I would love for you to share. Where are you in your nutrition and cooking journey? What are the challenges? How optimistic are you that these can be improved or resolved or overcome? What would make you extremely happy in your nutrition and cooking journey? So you can write me in the Journeys for Moms Facebook page or in the comments um, on the video here on Facebook or in YouTube once it's uploaded there. Um, I read all your letters and your comments one by one and I'm learning so much from you about your journeys and how to help as many moms as possible find the magic in their nutrition and cooking journey again so 2020 is almost here 2020 can be the year of awesome cooking in your kitchen 2020 can be the year of nourishment of body and soul it can be the, can be the year of self-love through food and eating instead of self-sabotage. This can be the year that your meal plan is prepared in advance every Sunday night. 
This can be the year where you're feeling nourished by the food you eat, so nourished that you're energetic and you're positive and it's affecting every aspect of your life because food matters. Food nourishes a mama and her family and we are all about nourishment and absolute self-love in 2020 for all mamas of the world. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more journeys later on this week.